Corbevac is really the vaccine that was co-developed by Biological E in India. Um, we managed to transfer the technology of how to make a recombinant protein, in this case, is a receptor binding domain that uh, really targets the original virus. But now, of course, we know that it also can confer really great protection against uh, the variant of concerns, uh, especially um, beta and delta. And we're in, in, in studies right now to evaluate Omicron. So we take this uh, engineering of uh, recombinant proteins, we, we produce the the constructs, we call them seeds, and then we transfer these to the manufacturers like BioE. Um, then we provide them, you know, the, the procedures of how we can um, produce them in the lab. And then they, of course, scale them to industrial scales. I mean, Biological E can make 100 million doses of this vaccine, right, from the recipe that we originally gave them. And as with Biological E, we're doing it with many other manufacturers such that they can then really increase the availability after, you know, major studies, clinical studies in India, we can uh, now see that this is a very efficacious and safe um, and highly producible vaccine. And Dr. Ortez, why is this vaccine suitable for low and middle income countries? Well, the, the real advantage is, number one, it's um, there's no limit to the amount you could scale. You can make billions of doses. It uses an older technology similar to that used to make the recombinant hepatitis B vaccine. And, and that's significant because that vaccine is made locally in multiple countries in the global south, in India and Indonesia and Bangladesh and Vietnam and Brazil uh, and elsewhere. So that if you need to produce a vaccine locally, this is the technology to do it. We've transferred the technology with no patents, no strings attached, and we help in the co-development to at least four countries so far with more to follow, India, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and now Botswana. This potentially could be actually made in sub-Saharan Africa. BioE is the first, the furthest along, the one in India. They've made now 150 million doses. That's ready to roll out. And they have the capacity for a billion doses. It's a high bar because we've got to provide 9 billion doses for low and middle income countries, 20 billion globally. I doubt we're going to do that with mRNA vaccines and the other technologies. So this will this will come in in order to get people vaccinated by 2022. And if we really work hard and get people vaccinated now, potentially we can forestall the new variant for the summer. What are the prospects of this vaccine being approved by the AU and the United States for travelers? Biological E, who is a vaccine manufacturer that has uh, uh, years of experience working with the World Health Organization and many of their vaccines are pre-qualified, are already working with the agencies to um, seek that emergency listing for the global use. We can also increase the, the level of distribution around the world. There have been a very big challenge around vaccine hesitancy. There are countries where vaccines have been thrown away because people were refusing to, to get vaccinated. What do you think will make Corbevax different, where people will, will be more accepting? They've already taken a vaccine like it through the hepatitis B vaccine, similar to yeast fermentation technology, either for themselves or their kids. Easy to scale, one of the lowest cost vaccines, one of the best safety profiles, a tried and true technology. People are willing to accept it. So when you go down the, the checklist, our vaccine checks a lot of boxes. What are the main takeaways then when we talk about Corbevax as a new vaccine coming in the pool of uh, vaccine against COVID-19? Having very trustworthy partnerships, I think that it was key, right? So our vaccine center has been working for years with the developing country vaccine manufacturer uh, network, working directly with locations in the low middle income countries to enable them you know self sufficiency and self reliance the fact that we already had 10 year prior experience working with coronavirus vaccines that really enabled that this technology could be very rapidly readapted for the covid-19 uh, sequence the procedures are very well known the regular regulators know about them the manufacturers know about them the the supply requirements are very well established um, so they're accessible and they're affordable. And the best takeaway is this could be a game changer also in acceptance because it's 
uh, already comes with years of experience in, in how they behave with regards to safety, including uh, safety in a very young population. You know, at some point, someone has to step up and say, what are we going to do to really help the world's low and middle income countries? And to tie it down with um, bickering and fighting over legalities and patents and intellectual property, this is not the way. At some point, we have to show a humanitarian concern for all the world's people. And at the same time, it's even in our own enlightened self-interest to prevent these new variants. Dr. Pitelotes, Dr. Maria Elena Bukazi, thank you so much to both of you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure.